<laughs> from Skype, maybe. Uh, I don't know. No, no, no. We're gonna do it from Zoom. Um, let me let me share screens one second. Desktop one. Share screen. How's it looking? Can you see my screen? Uh, not yet. What about now? It might be getting there. Oh man. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Okay then. I guess this is happening in the top left hand corner. We have the purple Prodos Neeb. And okay. in the bottom right hand corner, we have the red Zerg player from Psystorm. It is true. And do you want to cast or do you just want to make me solo cast? I need I to fix totally... this right now. What? What? Continue. Oh, continue? All right, cool. Awesome. True, at least for now, is going up to that three hatch before pool while his opponent, Neeb, aka or Neeb Litz, still worrying about his name, trying to figure that out. Neeb is not doing quite as aggressive opening in the previous game. However, Runes of Saris is the largest map. Lairlight Crest is pretty close to that, so he's just trying to be careful. Early scout from True just says, cool, I know exactly what you're doing. It's not to gate so far, at least that's what he's hoping. Generally, you do throw down that second gate about halfway through the cybernetic score. Drone pulls back from True after scouting. At the same time, we do have a probe for Neeb getting some scouting information in. And what's he going to see? He's going to see not a hatch gas pool. He's going to mm -hmm. confirm that it is a three hatch before pool. Does he spot the third hatch? Absolutely not, third not third just pool? yet. And he will get to see that creep. So the creep will help him to know exactly what's going on here and uh, be able to get that going. We do, of course, have the, uh, the three hatches down quite quickly here. Uh, but, you know, not all that different from last game. Uh, Neeb was able to still throw pretty strong uh, elements there. But we don't have uh, too much indication of tech just yet for the other player. No, not quite for true just yet. Neeb is moving out across the map with one very early adept, just getting a nice little inclination on what's going on. Shading forward and should be able to scout that third base. Still not quite seeing it. However, as you mentioned, Jack Attack, it will be there eventually. Adept moves in. Queen's going to be ready, and it's don't think it's going to be able to get that much damage done. Maybe one or two, but simultaneously shades into Ooh. the main. Nicely done. At least one kill there. And uh, making use of that shade. And really low hit points uh, overall there, but going to make it out, stay alive here. And uh, just really nice, just single adept, you know, just not super committal, no crazy aggression. Just one adept bouncing around, doing what it can do, and being safe. Going to hang out on the ramp there and let that cooldown finish off to regain mobility. Ooh. Back that. at home, a robotics facility is coming down, and actually a robotics bay. At first, I was expecting more warp prism. We do have warp prism on the way. Maybe it's going to be warp prism disruptor. Do we see that still jack attack? That'd be crazy. I think adepts are better overall, however. Still really damage worthy. Can do a ton of damage. A couple spores going down. Oh, man. Line, but does spot the layer, and oh my word. Just barely really saves that. At this. Does get a kill here. Kill's beginning to come in. Man, uh, so we're up to three total kills here, yeah, for for this one adept. Good job. Uh, you know, job, that double adept moving in sometimes only gets four kills, so uh, three total kills with one adept. Good job. That's going to be uh, some nice value of that. Eleven drones on the way. Oh, warps. Oh, yeah, gravitic drive, the warp mm. prism speed on the way. One of my favorite upgrades in the entire game. Uh, can allow a lot of mobility and harass options. We also, like you said, have the Disruptor coming in. Very popular unit right now. New with Legacy of the Void. And they're just going to be able to potentially... Oh, going right for the drones. Interesting enough, a uh, little bit of overkill there. Got to watch out um, because the projectile weapons of the Adepts uh, are projectile weapons. And you can overkill. So four of them will go ahead and do extra damage uh, when they don't need to. So you got to be careful for that. And doing their best to keep... Oh, look at this micro. It's fantastic, fantastic micro. Picking up, oh, it's... keeping everything alive. Look at this. It is great. Neeb gets out with four adepts. And the thing that made all of that possible essentially is True saying, you know what? You opened up with one adept. You're not going to pressure me more. I'm going to be okay. And only had like four lings when that actually started. Neeb off the back of that pulls back to his disruptor. I would have liked to see a drop in the main, especially as you mentioned with gravitic drive or whatever. Gravitic, gravitic drive. drive. Yep, you got I'm it. Gravitic drive. That at all that. And he's also upgraded one Colossus and Adept as the uh, as the Colossus Adept bug. 
uh, will tell us every it's time. for the <laughs> deluxe edition, I actually learned. Oh, it's like an upgrade because of the skins. Uh -huh. Oh, actually, two disruptors. Can they make it happen? That's a little bit of a dicey position, possibly. Need could lure True into that, but looks like he won't. Four meters are on the way. Five meters on the way for True the entire time. He had zero upgrades because he was saving up for gas. Income wise, we're seeing pretty darn even between the two players, but here's the possibility for some disruptor Ooh. shots. Only gets one off, though. Nice defense here from True. That can be very tough to manage and uh, manage it with near perfection and. All this investment into the Warp Prism Disruptors has gotten very little damage done. So we're seeing True start to pull ahead in supply um, and sort of make that happen. Nicely done again, just still. That was another Disruptor hit dodged by True. Just excellent defense. Finally, the meters are out. The Warp Prism can't keep harassing, but now there's stalkers to re-engage. Blink is on the way. There's a decent amount of lings out on the map. 22, 10 mutas, and 20 more lings. This army of oh, True is at the point it. of exactly where he wants to be it. Neeb moving in. It looks like it's going to be a large base trade. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, potential base race 2.0. Uh, no recall home, but he's just going to walk all of his units all the way home here. Uh, nice little stop position micro, messing with the AI of the Zerglings. This cannon is going to get a lot done before the mutas show up, but will be targeted down quite quickly after that. Warp ins coming through everything for Neeb, trying to hold on against this position here. Blinking forward, going to be able to take out none mutas. A uh, slightly lower number than he would have wanted there. And uh, But overall, he's managed to hold on to his three bases, which is important. Only lost four workers, which, again, not too much considering the investment of that attack. Uh, but True here has delayed the attack of Neeb pretty significantly, uh, which is going to allow uh, True to go ahead and get a nice position here for the next phase of the game. Nice position and another beautiful Muta Harassed. We even have a Mama Core out of the map. We do have a Mama Core, but it's not in the position to Photon Overcharge. Muta's head on into the main of that cannon is so low on health. Muta's doing a decent amount of damage, trying to push back these probes. So far, 8, 9, 10 kills, 14 kills in total. It is 61 to 48. And the Muta's still maybe will pick up this Warp Prism. Looks like they're going to drop back. And by the way, guys, Currently, with the stream qualities purely because I'm actually screen sharing since Jack Attack wasn't added into the game. Uh, yeah, so we could have made the players or asked the players to restart the game, but uh, in my opinion, this is about the players, not about us. And so uh, we remain focused on the players. 25 workers killed. Oh my god, that is absolutely nuts. But yeah, we're not going to ask them to restart. We're just going to make this happen just for this one game, and uh, they'll let me in. I had to go ahead and fix a sound bug. Uh, so I got kicked from the party, but man, True is in a dominating position right now. This is really scary for Neeb. It is incredibly scary. Desperately, Neeb is trying to get up this third base economy to be able to bounce back, get some economy up, but he's caught out of position. Once again, the stalkers are preemptively saying, I know you're going to move up into the main, but that means they can't blink down to defend that third base. Third base goes down, and True has a dominating grip on the map. What do we got? We got a third base. We got a fifth base on the way. Actually, we has got a lot of bases so far. For True overall, True again is going to push in. The Stalkers are here this time, and True does not want to directly engage, but does manage to snipe off that pylon. Resonating Glaives is coming up, and pretty much Neve, he hasn't been able to get economy nor army. Looks like he's going to try to bank, hopefully, off technology. This is such a rough position for Neve. Keep in mind, Neve is up 1-0 right now, and this is a best of three, so even if True wins this, it's not over yet. Uh, and in the other hand, True needs to win this, or he's out of the tournament uh, out of that running for the... Oh, and Depp's actually in the main will get completely surrounded. However, that pulls the entire Muta Ling Ball of True out of the oh, way. Oh, wow. The bottom left, while the army of Neeb heads into that third base. So many stalkers. How many stalkers? Total of 31 stalkers, and they're going for the snipe. They're going for the base trade, and we'll see how pure stalker works versus pure Muta on the base trade. Uh, yeah, looking pretty good here. Neeb's just sort of going for it. There's a lot less area to defend. Pylon Overcharge is going to be very, very helpful in this position. Uh, drains all the energy from the Mothership Core immediately. Nice Sim City is going to help out a lot here. On the other side of the map, these Stalkers are blasting through. Oh, all these reinforcements getting picked off is a pretty big deal here. All these Mutalists that should be in the ball that are not because of this uh, reinforcement pickoff. But there are just so little buildings for Neeb in this base race that True has a distinct advantage in that way. 
Definitely. Muta's getting right on top of all the production. There is no reinforcements for either force. We're going to see the Stalkers pull back. Army supply-wise, it is 99 to 65. True has it. Just FYI, need won the first game, so this would even up one-to-one. -one. There is the GG. I love the one guy in the chat, by the way. He's like, yay, game sounds. Yeah, technically, Finally. I, there, was, there was the music behind that. Uh, <laughs> sorry, let me end. just... Uh, <laughs> get this figured out yeah there wasn't any game sound from you coming through of course so um oh yeah my bad oh dang it yeah. i was like hey i think he was sound. being sarcastic but i'm not sure uh but if you weren't being sarcastic thank you for that uh the reason why the stream quality was down is because that was a screen share it didn't actually i wasn't able to get into that game in time I was having a sound bug so trying to get uh the sound bug and now we are up at um one two one and our third map Oh man, such a great map for a map three. It's almost like they planned it. We're gonna have Ruins of Saras. This time, Jack Attack is in the lobby. Whew! I know, right? I was, I was, I was like, that's the first thing I'm doing, man. I love loading into that, and then I'm hitting my, I on my mouse. You know how you have the two buttons on the left hand side? Mm -hmm. I don't even know what to call them, but the special button is not a normal mouse. And I keep hitting the one that's assigned to the observer, and I'm like, what's no? What no? No! Oh, oh man. <laughs> one to one it is currently. Neeb versus True. Game three. Ruins of Ceres. I believe you're going for Neeb. I'm going for True. So True is able to even it up. I, I think you can do it. I think you can do it, Jack. Yeah. Well, it's going to be a pretty wild game. We've had two base races so far. Are we going for base race number three? We're going to find out uh, in just a bit. Spawning in the top left-hand corner of Ruins of Seras, the player who just won the last game needs one more to finish it out. Going for a 13 Overlord, it's Psy Storm's True. And why Jack Attack? Is the 13th Overlord not so good? Oh, that's because it's inefficient compared to the 14 Overlord. Thank you. And in the bottom right-hand corner, the red Protoss player, the one, the only, Neeb. We switched from Terran to Protoss in WCS and then mm -hmm. started to win. <laughs> yep, Protoss, yeah, switch from, I love his too, right? He switches from Terran to Protoss and then moves into Void and uh, Protoss has generally been the weakest race in Void. <laughs> um, so, a little bit unfortunate for Neeb. Hopefully he'll, uh, he'll find his way. And he's been doing pretty well so far. Uh, a bit of a, uh, a bit of uh, you know, sort of back and forth there, trying to figure out what his identity is. Who is he really? Who is a Neeb? What but is a Neeb? Actually, that's a better with question. Identity issue. What is Neeb? Neeb? Who is what Neeb? What is a Neeb? Well, true is like I'm true to my race. I am Zerg. Pun nation. I was punny. Absolutely, man. But in all seriousness, <laughs> though, what is a Neeb? the hell is a neeb like if you google me what it's comes like a, up it's like a little neeb yeah because actually the other thing too right he signs up for tournaments and sometimes he's neeb sometimes he's neeblet so he's at least indecisive you know but what what's what's a neeb what's a neeblet one of the great deep questions of our day maybe i think <laughs> i almost think like a neeblet of corn you know like one little thing of corn one, little one thing, kernel yeah. of corn is like just... a neeblet I gotta say, there's a guy in chat who's like, what if both Jack Attack and Dreadnought are actually also playing in the entire tournament stage by us? Yes, that is exactly what's going on. We are playing and casting. I cast And observing one. at the same time. And, and and we have a third guy observing, so basically Jack is that much better than me, because he's observing and playing, and I'm just playing and casting. Quick three hatch for True. Gonna mm -hmm. get up a nice economy, and that's pretty much what he did last game, maybe saying... You know what? Maybe if you go to the base trade, I like my macro slightly better. Runes of Ceres cross spawn positions again. This is the longest way you can get mm -hmm. in the legacy of the void at the moment with the map. Well, at least from each other. Man, we'll I love so much this single adept opening from Neeb. Absolutely love it. It's just not super committal to aggression, but he's going to get over there. He gets the scout from the adept, and last game he was able to deal a significant amount of damage. Ooh, tech switch changed in his mind there. Uh, maybe a little bit of a misclick, or maybe changing his his mind about what he wants to do. We're gonna go for a Twilight Council here for Neeb Neeblets Neebletons, uh, also known as Sir Neebs. 
Possibly Neve is going to be going into the blank stalker plate as a stalker on the way. For now, the adept is going to be pressing that third. And as you were saying, I love this adept not only because it's one adept, but how patient Neve is with it. He doesn't run it and lose it. He pushes in, kind of pushes out. He pushes in. He never commits too much. It's it's a great form of scouting. Get a little bit of damage done. Back at home, though, we have a robotics facility and. I'm guessing we're gonna see a drop or a warp prism stalker harass. Yeah, resonating glaive adept drop is what I think. And oh, the depth is so close to actually being taken down in the main base. It's cornered. Whew. It looks like it's cornered. And eventually, wow. oh, no, it gets out. Wait, where's it get out to though? Where the? I think, I think it. I think he it just Houdini'd off the map, man. <laughs> it's gone. It 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 was it was killed by something and just Houdini'd out of the map. Actually, decide I'm not even gonna be killed. I'm just gonna straight up disappear. Uh, one of the man. upgrades you can get for the Adept, called Straight Up Disappear, yo. Uh, which is, you know, a little bit colloquial phrasing, but we don't mind it here. And we got a lot of links coming through over here. Ten links. Uh, quite aggressive. But the wall is in place for Neeb, so should be pretty comfortable. These ten links can be able to get a scout off. Way, but on the back of that, there was ten drones, so it's just a little commitment. Stalker was is large enough to be able to block this off. Possibly that's why we didn't see a second adept from Neeb. Pylon's going down. Actually, this gateway has to be super careful. Link's almost getting that down. Stalker goes down, and the pylon is so close to being killed. I'd love to see Neve get a really quick warp and something here. Mothership Core is only a few seconds away to be able to defend, and the pylons are so close. Thankfully, Mothership Core starts off with two double footer and overcharge, and will be able to push back Nee True. And now True has to worry about the Mothership Core moving. Oh my across god, the drones. <laughs> All right, yeah, the big thing is he saw that Warp Prism coming across the map, so he knows it's coming. What is he doing to prepare? He's making more links for defense, for Overlords on the way uh, as well. This is not a good time to be supply blocked. Definitely, it is not a good time to be supply blocked. We'll see Neeb just a few seconds away. Looks like he's going to go over the Creep Tumor, and thankfully for True, he knows that it's on the way. Queen is going to be able to get a little bit of DPS in. Two Queens are in the main, are ready to defend. Now it's four Adepts. Lanes are repositioning, and I don't think this damage is going to do that much, but remember, these Adepts have Resonating Glaives. They can do a lot more damage, and a big warp in with the wall as its back. Yeah, we are all over the place. Uh, shading back and forth here. The Adepts do really well against Zerglings, but uh, he's going to need to do a little bit of micro. Oh, elevator. look at this pickup nice. drop elevator micro. It's almost like fair. Blink Stalkers. That was phenomenal. Uh, you can have Blink Adepts too, as long as you micro your Warp Prism. And uh, four workers already killed over here. Going to uh, do a little bit more micro. He's going to shade out. And, oh, it looks like he's just going to... He's committing. Yeah, he's going to get out over here. Got a lot of Adepts over here. So many Links being forced. So many Links being killed as well. Really cost-effective engagement here. Uh, for our Protoss player. And then another warping in the main. Four more adepts are this moving in. This is relentless, in, and man. Now there's just not enough lings with the phenomenal moving back and forth of Neeb in the elevator. He did kill a lot of lings. Now he's got to go home. He's not going to commit to that. True is so many queens to defend. Muta off the back of this. So I guess at least Neeb is forcing True to move into Muta to be able to defend the air. And the lings are out in the middle of the map. Will they be able to defend? No, the entire force is being pulled back. They don't know how much they need to defend this. And this bought so much time for Neeb to do what, though? What is he exactly? doing at home taking the third He's well the third's finishing up these three cannons will be pretty instrumental to defending the third we're seeing this over and over again long ago you used to see a uh, double pylon and then a cannon would hide here and you put some two gates here but now you just throw the pylons down you float the mothership core the and you lings. say get at me bro oh my word 37 lings move in but two pylons say no Ling's very afraid of the pylons now and I, I love that and just the mentality of the ling they're like okay is it, is it an attacking pylon the feeble puppy-like mind of the lings <gasps> attacking pylon <gasps> and then no oh and then no. yes and then death uh and then death yes yes oh yes is what we always awaited for Ooh. again before adepts move in but man neve has been able to use this one war prism this 200 mineral war prism plus adepts so effectively and i honestly think he's the one that forced out the mutas from true this is a decision of true oh look at this Mita, it's oh crap i need to be he... able to hold He's faked a Colossus and is warping in Archons. Very fun. Very interesting. I don't know if it actually worked out, because I didn't think this uh, got scouted at all. But, always fun if you can manage to show off the wrong tech. We do have Mutas coming in. Archon's very good at killing Mutas. Very bad at catching up to them. So, uh, we'll see exactly how that's going to work out in just a moment. Fifteen Mutas on the way. A large uh, patch... Uh, 
of which I think a murder of mutas is the uh, collective murder, noun yes, there. Yes, like crows or yep. ravens, it is a murder of crows, I believe. Yeah, going to be coming we'll out here. Ooh, and finally, we'll the bane of his existence. Oh, oh the gets Mutas taken down. Right into the Archons take a lot of damage. Knee moving on the left hand side. While we see, of course, True on the right hand side. He's looking to do some damage, but are now do True's reinforcements are going to be split up. And it looks like we're going to see some sort of surround, but I'm not sure if it's going to be enough. May I remind you guys, it is currently one to one in a best of three series. Neeb is looking to end it, but he's got to be super careful not to overcommit. He has DPS and AoE, but maybe not enough for a big swing swell. Yeah, nicely done here. Um, True is cutting off the reinforcements of Neeb so that it can only move out in certain groups. Going to be able to get... Oh, and this was, by the way, the Warp Prison rebuilt instantly after it was killed off. And uh, trying to keep that alive now. Moving in, we have to the third base of True. A little bit of damage, considering a poke through. This might just be a scout. Uh, and, ooh, moving into position, trying to catch these units out of position, but they're going to run away quite quickly, and, oh, this is quite a big group here of this Ling Muta. Just really, really big swell of it. You have to be super careful if it engages directly with the army of Neeb, of how Neeb's positioned, because he could potentially get a little bit split up, and this is not what I want. He wants to be really oh my god when these Lings engage, and the Lings We're in the doing middle it of the map are just super undecisive. Beautiful force field negates any drones from getting out of there. 34 Lings are on the way to defend at home, but I'm not sure if it's going to be enough. Well, in the bottom right-hand corner, actually, the Spire is potentially at jeopardy. Third goes down. Bottom right-hand corner, though, we'll see how quickly the Thunder Nova charges. All the probes just barely getting out. No vote on overcharges because there's going to be a need uh, as there's going to be need of defense in the main and with the mothership core back at home there's going to be no teleport home mutas are going to reign free absolutely tons of damage just up on both sides we have the third base race in a row between these two players that will decide it all for the series uh, these adepts smashing through over here while the main army going into the natural in the meantime this force looking a little bit better from true this time around a little bit stronger one on one but this position is going to be a tough nut to crack we've got quite a bit of energy that gets instantly spended on all of these pylons directly away and in the meantime all of everything is being killed for true excellently done here by Neeb he plays the base race well and he's gonna keep at it here a lot of mutas on the map right now 30 mutas on the map very difficult to deal with even with archons even with cans he's gonna move right in over here nice blink he's gonna try and stay alive in the meantime across the map everything is falling apart it's all about this battle right here Pro whoever can survive is going to win to try to do something but there's just so many mutas not enough AOE currently out on the map there is still 22 mutas truly is taking the battle on the top left maybe true was planning the entire time to do some sort of base race because he has those bases however Neve knows about it and he's got to react quickly thankfully he has been pulled back true is pulling back and what buildings do we have all right buildings? as far as structures we got, we got two hatcheries and four extractors quite a few structures left over for Neeb. so Neeb's ahead in that case uh ooh, looking to potentially take a direct engagement here nice blink get some muta and that is all it's about. 21 mutas now, trying to shave that muta count down. In the meantime, keeping his unit spread out, taking back... Again, there's only two hatcheries left on the map. Once these hatcheries are gone, he will be revealed. Uh, Neeb, in the meantime, though, not revealed just yet. These links going to come through and clean things up. Neeb is putting down... Oh, my God! The top, right? Trying to do something that picks up a hatchery. The adepts do the unthinkable. So with the critical. Glaives and two hatcher Wait, do we... Yeah, we don't, we don't have any hatcheries. We do no have, hatcheries. Although, Five extractors with one coming in. minerals. Do we have any... Do we have any drones? Four drones. Oh, my word. Where are these drones currently out on the map? They're all in the top left. And one making another extractor. And desperately, we could see a hatch go down. And we'll see where that happens. Lings of True able to clean up the main base of Neeb. And thankfully, oh, this is going to be pretty that. huge. Neeb 12 workers to down. four here. Um, and True does not have enough to rebuild right now. So... Oh, no. I'm sorry. He's rebuilding right now. Hatchery on yeah. the way. Uh, so... The worker lead to Neeb should give him the advantage long term as long as he realizes oh, this that's the hardest here. part here he's got to stay defensive got to stay back over here and all oh, this phoenix scout is going to be so critical so important having this phoenix scout available is super helpful allows him to keep his units at home during this base race scenario in the meantime the hollowed out base of Neeb is coming through over here. He's got some minerals and quite a bit of gas banked up, but all the tech is being taken out. He'll be starting from the beginning. Nice position on these Archons is going to prevent most of the muted damage coming through. The range is relatively short. 
Oh. Three more drones are going down, and actually, there's this is the last one drone. drone left for True, and he doesn't have a he does he doesn't have a hatch. Yes, he does. He has one hatchery. Oh, phew! He does have the hatchery. One hatchery to one nexus. The biggest thing about the composition for with these meters is that they can't always directly engage. So even though it is a base trade for Neeb, the only way the meters do any damage, they have to directly engage into Neeb. But Neeb has double the workers, actually more than that, three times the workers, twelve to three for Neeb. Neeb is in such a phenomenal position. But yep. we're gonna see. I mean, potentially you have one of the situations where. He just can't move out. What? Yeah, notice this too. He starts the Cybernetics Corp before the last gateway comes out. This is going to allow him to get a um, Mothership Corp, which is so huge in base raids. Not only with the recall, but also with a pylon overcharge. Not that many pylons so far. A whole bunch of pylons being thrown down, trying to unsupply block Neeb. He needs to do that first before making anything. True is able to poke in, and that is the last build in the bottom. We do have a couple of buildings that are there. The assimilator, however, that Nexus is the last building. And all in with the Sim City. I like it for Neeb, but it's going to make him it harder for him to blink back and defend these mutas if he is pulled out of position. We do yep. see mining from True, and it is much easier to be able to start making his army back because he still has all these overlords, and he is not supply blocked. Yeah, the overlords' big advantage here. Also, the fact that you have uh, oh, the larva. The Neeb knows where the enemy hatchery is. Yes. Up left. Yeah, Neeb has been uh, has known where it, uh, where that is for quite some time now. They both sort of know at least that they have these bases. Uh, there could be other bases out on the map. They are not a hundred percent sure of that. But all these pylons really going to help defend as we finally have his Mothership core coming out. And that's going to feel really good for Neeb. And maybe even make him feel like, oh, you know, I could, you know, maybe make an attack over there. Uh, maybe with a couple of units. It's, it's really tricky decision making right now. And you have to be super careful. One wrong move and the game ends. And I love what Neeb is doing. He's getting plus one air and a Stargate. He's playing it safe, not going to go for some crazy jump onto the hatch to try to kill it, and then a teleport back at home, allowing the mutas to do damage. For now, though, True, as it was mentioned, Ooh, against all nice adepts, adepts Aras. And there's nothing in to defend. Lings are trying to be pulled back to defend these adepts. Adepts get a total of three kills. Every second they're not mining, they'll literally see zero minerals for True. Every second they're not mining is a second where Neeb is putting himself into an even better position. Thankfully, Neeb has all the utilities. He's going to be able to catch a couple of these mutas out of position. Does he Manage to pick off Ooh, one and he does. Picks off one, potentially two, just barely not. Keep in mind that True has started another hatchery over here. Very far apart across the map, and it has yet to be scouted by Neeb. So this is a difficult position for Neeb. Uh, although, in general, he's uh, got a bit of the upper hand, I would say, in this position, just with the more economy overall and uh, beginning to hopefully mine gas. But these mutas are in a nice position to try and deny those. These mutas could possibly dive in again, but finally Neeb does have a small amount of phoenixes, two phoenixes so far, yet there's still 20 mutas out of the map. Still, though, no spawning pool, no nothing like that. And just by the way, these mutas do have plus one attack currently. Mutas are going to try to be harassing, and by the way, we also see tons of extractors. If you just look at the vision of a true, he's got vision all over the map of random overlords and extractors. Oh, but the mutas, they're diving straight on top of the stalkers along the phoenixes to do some damage. It was a big loss. We're down to 18 Mutalists. Keep in mind, the tech is so far behind for these players right now. No spawning pool yet. Just starting now for True. Trying to get back into this. And uh, he's just very carefully zoning these out. Technically speaking, one Phoenix can kill all of these Mutas. But it requires perfect micro uh -oh. and prediction of movement. Which is very difficult to do. So he's got to be super careful. All of the focus here is on him. Meanwhile, True is going to try to juke him out. Turn around. Oh, oh that's it. That's the move. Takes out one. Very difficult. You got to juke him out. You got to make him feel like, oh, yeah, I'm running away. Bam! Hit you in the face with some glaives. I think right now for Neeb, the best bet is to fight the Phoenixes, pardon me, the Mutas, a little bit closer to his base so the Stalkers can blink on underneath. The Mutas, but the Mutas... Man, oh, he's moving out here. Up a third. Only one Phoenix left, and this may be the opportunity for True. However, also the opportunity for Neeb. Neeb needs to pull back, yet he's now got a Mothership Core with a five or six foot and overcharges in it. Lots of pylons. There's enough foot and overcharges to push back the Mutas, and this is just who, who's got the better game sense. 
Yeah, really great play here. The one wild card for True is that base in the bottom left still left unscouted by Neeb. Nice. Cancels the second Stargate. Going to get help out uh, just a bit overall. But he really needs to be able to supplement this ground force in a major way because this, this Phoenix count is just going to get so extreme. The meters are going to be made obsolete in time. And that is the time. That is the timer, the clock on True to get something done. For true still, we're actually now we do have a spawning pool in the top left hand base. I'd rather see it in the bottom left so it doesn't easily get sniped, but he does have that spawning pool. Can start to make limbs again. Third I one. Had wow. to, I guess go to Muto. There's another hatch. Basically, True is saying, you know what? The Protoss in this position, you have the better position. I can't fight your army one for one. I'm gonna try to make I'm gonna try to make you make the wrong decision and then move in and snipe your base. Maybe there's still so many Phoenixes though. Need he's remaking his economy and I think he's going to be able to take a jack attack. He's playing he's, the he's expanding to his natural. It's the classic 19-minute yes. expand build. He's expanding to his natural base over here. Uh, and yeah, with the spread out situation, those three bases, Neeb doesn't know about them. He could make a huge mistake here, move all of his units to kill off this base because he feels protected, uh, and then the mutas come in and the links come in and go ahead and kill this base. That's basically what True is hoping for at this point point in time so frustrating for true to continuing to fight on in this situation here uh, showing a lot of tenacity but uh, definitely behind the eight ball here two phoenixes at a time and now for Neve, he's put himself into the worst position into the best position ever this is what a protoss dreams of in the base trades and now he is getting gutsy he's saying i'm gonna move out of the map and look for a couple of your mutas so far there's a lot more lings it's still we got three ro three archons a lot of ground army for true Neve still is gonna patrol mm. and he, he's feeling gutsy and may remind you guys these phoenixes do have plus one sadly they don't have but they do have plus one attack. Mm -hmm. Plus one attack. No range just yet, which is kind of a saving grace for True here. If that range were upgraded, uh, things would be quite insane. Quite ridiculous indeed. Uh, but they're not. And I think that one of the big advantages that Neeb, uh, uh, excuse me, that True has is that True has the, the vision. True has the map. Uh, spreading out all of these hatcheries across the map. The income starting to get very strong in the minerals for our Zerg player. And Neeb... Just sort of getting caught back here, maybe taking too long to make his move as the Lurker Den is on its way. Oh my word, and that is the, the beautiful unit, but at the same time, Neeb in the top left is going for some aggression, trying to snipe that base. True completely evacuates out onto there and does not want to face that. This may be a prime opportunity to section off a small portion of the army, but Neeb with these Phoenixes so well, surgically moves in, takes out. I guess that was technically the fourth base now. We have oh, Ling's coming in over here. You might catch this army out of position. There's a lot of splash damage coming through. Oh, the Phoenix. Phoenix. Oh, the Phoenixes don't fight right on top. The Phoenixes are so gutsy fighting right on top of the Mutas. With the Archons, they're going to be able to shred the Muta count. There is no army for True. And now Neeb just needs to find where it is. 63 army supply of Neeb to the 20 of True. Oh, True wow. Neeb's got to act. He's got to act right now. Lurkers, maybe. But I guess Phoenixes can pick up the Lurkers, I guess. We got Pathogen oh, no. Glands, five Hydralisks, a Lurker Den, and a Hive coming out. And all of this unscouted by Neeb. He has no idea where this bases he has no idea why truce is still in this game turns out he's been building a base in this bottom left hand corner the entire time even getting plus one range uh this is just turning into hey we played cross bonds top left bottom right you want to play cross bonds the other way i like that a little bit better okay sounds good and we're gonna go ahead and get going the supplies are There's relatively so even pieces. here even yeah. the bottom left, taking out an entire mineral line. 16 drones going down, and true, he shows his hand. Oh, shows he's about to hydras, see it. But there is not enough hydras, period. The true he's just didn't have to. the economy. Right in the beginning, as I was mentioning, everyone commenting on my terrible math, three drones to 12. There was just that kickstart to Neeb's economy, which he needed, is able to get him in this position. Still a couple hydras, but not enough AoE. Jack attack. Neeb is close, taking out all the units he can. We see a link counterattack the top right. Need though is able to reduce almost all the workers. Oh yeah, that's that's pretty Even much nothing though, here. The advantage though, you got to keep in mind, right? The advantage though in this situation is that uh, they cannot touch spore crawlers. So as long as he keeps the spore crawlers, he's okay. As far as the economy is, actually, despite all of this harass, True is still ahead. He can make. Uh, Vipers if he wants to, if he wants to deal with these through the Viper route, and he's getting more Hydralisk upgrades. Long term, uh, he's clawing his way back into this game here. 
Mm -hmm. Which is something I would never expect both players wow. have believed so hard in themselves. And it's really one of those things. When I say believe, I truly mean believe. It's that, no, I can do this. I can keep going. You don't <laughs> Look at this. up. They are trying. Learn this has to be, this is the way. most phenomenal game of StarCraft I've there ever no casted in my life. There, oh no, my god. There's observers on the way. For me, he's already got an observer ready. The yep. worker is a last ditch attempt, but man, I don't know. I don't know, Jack. There's so many spores. The ground army is moving across the map and need. He smells the blood in the water, but can he take the victory? Is he going to open himself too much to counterattack? The problem is there's not much of an army to counterattack with for True, where he had those threat of the Mutas for so long in his base trade, that threat is now gone. There is no ground defense over here. We have a Lurker, and it's in the middle of the map. Bob's pulling back, though. That one Lurker is going to be the hero Lurker. He can oh, the feel lurker, his name being chanted by all of Zergling Dumb, and it's moving back at the same time. The Phoenix is on the bottom right-hand side of Neeb, not really doing that much. Big Blink Ford is going to finally take out that Spore. 19, 20 workers killed. And where's the lurker? Ooh. There's the one lurker. Where's the where's observer? The observer? Is more important. We got three the of them. One of them is on the way, but in the meantime, I'm going to get some free damage. Uh, it's definitely not worth all of this tech, though. Uh, the lurker, zero kills so far. So rough. And this starts... Uh, our, oh, man, he's building two, another two. Hydra Den. Viper is on the way, man. This is so correct. I'd love to see True go to the bottom right. Like, you know what? You know what? I like I like vertical spawn positions better. I'll be, I'll be honest. I'll be honest. I was lying before. <laughs> Yeah, the absolutely. So close. And he's continuing to expand in a clockwise way, just wonder, over wonder, here, and then over he here, the then money, over guys. here. This is a $650 first place tournament. There is a lot of money on the line. True will not give up. Neeb is trying to claw his this way game back. Three here. True is Neeb is going to finally punch down this position. And there's just not enough army out of the map to make Neeb want to defend at home. Yeah, this is going to clean things up pretty quickly here and the hope is running out and being poured into this single viper which will have enough for one parasitic bomb it is 125 energy uh, keeping that in mind if he pulls up oh we got a lot of hydras but they're all coming out over here they're all gonna get picked off oh so quickly right once they're coming out one up one by one into a meat grinder this is the last well, I, technically well true also is the base in the top left by the way that was never sniped i just gotta point that out like that's yep. still alive Income wise though, Paras is finally taking a lead in the mineral department and uh, this is a full, this is oh, a full the three base. Dies! Oh! The last hope. Last hope. Falls. Five hydras. There and G that's it! GG! Oh my god. G two to one. Takes wow. the victory back, but I gotta give it to True. He tried so hard. True, but, but in the last moments of it, he lost the top left-hand corner base and then sent his mutas in, and there was just so many phoenixes. Neem just went right on top of it, but what happened before that? What what, 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 did, he, what did even happen? That was absolutely a crazy game. A crazy series. Three base trades in a row. It's not something that you, that you expect. Uh, I'm trying to figure exactly who was... Uh, who is making that happen? Who is basically the the, the human spurring um, all of that Neve, on, you know? I think it was Neeb because Neeb... Okay, well, what happened? Neeb was in the top left and then True is in the middle. And True is like, I want to fall back. I want to go for I'll just I'll go forward because True for a really long time with his mutas and lings was trying to get a full surround of Neeb, but he just didn't quite engage. You remember that? He was in the middle. And yeah. Looking, looking for the surround and said, you know what? Let's hightail it on out of here, guys. It's base trade. Yep. Yeah, actually, I think uh, the decision to base race uh, all three times, I think, was true. And unfortunately, it worked out yeah. only one out of three times for him, and uh, he's eliminated from this tournament. Uh, so we will be moving on. Let's go ahead and take a look at the brackets and see what kind of updates we have going on over here. Uh, we will be casting Beyond.